Well, if you join me in the Bible, in the book of James, chapter number 1, we are beginning this morning in looking at our second lesson in fruit by the bushel. Fruit by the bushel. And so we're going to begin by reading James, chapter number 1, as we are dealing with this second lesson, which is entitled, Rooted in Christ. Rooted in Christ. If you need to pick up a handout from the back there, feel more than uh, welcome to do so. It won't be a problem at all. The book of James chapter number 1, verse number 19, the Bible says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God, verse 21, wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. So notice what verse 22 says. Be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. If we're just hearers of the word of God and we're not acting out the word of God, we're deceiving ourselves. Look what it says in verse 23. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is likened to a man beholding his natural face in a glass, for he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be, what's that word, church? Blessed in his deed. Now, all throughout the Word of God, you find there's blessings for doing what God wants you to do, and you find there's cursing for not doing what God wants you to do. And so today we're going to see how being rooted in Christ allows us to receive the blessings of God in our life. Look at the overview on your pages. It says on your handout, as both Jesus Christ and the Bible are the living Word of God, it is impossible to be rooted in Christ without being rooted in His Word. That's what our lesson's on today. Being rooted in in the Word of Christ. A genuine disciple of Christ prepares his heart or uh, for to humbly receive the Word of God and to allow it to be his or her guide through life. And so we need to understand the importance of being rooted in this book that you hold in your hands. This Bible needs to be a vital part of your daily life. And just to make this thing make sense, on why Jesus Christ is the Word and this is the Word and this one and the same thing, we get that from the book of John chapter 1 verse number 1 which says in the beginning was the Word that's another name for Jesus, capital W in your Bible, in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God, the Bible is the living Word of God and Jesus is a living Word of God as well, there is no way that you can separate these two and have of the same thing. There's no way Christ can be Christ without the Word and vice versa. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Colorado State University made the 2012 headlines in one of the most horrific trials and tragedy ever to take place in our country. James Holmes, a brilliant 24-year-old neuroscience student, dressed up like the Joker, went into a theater and killed 12 innocent people, wounding 58 others. An officer choked back tears as he told the court how he entered into the building and slipped in blood. Investigators uncovered other bizarre behavior in his life as authorities found dozens of explosive devices and trip wires rigged to, the tri to trigger them in Holmes' 800 square foot apartment. Everybody in America America, and especially in the news media, attempted to uncover what was going on in Holmes' heart and mind that would cause him to commit such an unthinkable act. It is commonly understood that this horrifying fruit is a pro is not the pro fruit. Excuse me, is not the problem. It is the root that is the problem. So we see 
an evidence of people acting out in their sin. That's the fruit of an underlying problem that is within. So we realize that in our lives, there could be things that we are rooted in that would control us to do something that is not pleasing to God. Now in my counseling sessions with people, when we are dealing with this type of thing, we do picture a tree. And we say that the actions are the leaves on the trees. And those actions are controlled by attitudes. And that's the trunk of the tree. And the roots that go down into the soil, that is the academics or that is the thought life behind a person. And the soil refers to the authority that a person has placed themselves under. It does matter what authorities you have in life. It does matter who you allow to control your academics. It does matter who you allow to control your thoughts. If you study your Bible, you'll find out that Satan can send us thoughts. Though you realize that for a born-again believer, if God has taken residence inside of that person, they cannot be possessed by the devil, but they can be oppressed by him. We realize that Satan can control us if he can control our thoughts and send us lies about things. So the question is, what are we rooted in? Who are we rooted in? And last week we talked about being rooted in Christ. That literally when we got saved, it's as if we were uprooted from the soils of sin and then planted in the soils of the Savior. And we say, praise God for that. But we realize that we must understand how deeply it is necessary for us to get involved in the Word of God that we may please the Word of God. You see what I'm saying? Now as we look and study our lesson today, we move on with a couple verses before we begin. Psalm 119 verse 40. Thy word is very pure, therefore thy servant loveth it. If there's a psalm that you should get into to try to increase your desire for the word of God, it ought to be Psalm 119. What is like five or seven verses out of all of those verses in that psalm do not refer specifically to a word that means the law of God, the precepts of God, or the word of God. Only five to seven verses that do not have anything that mentions the Bible in them. I'm so thankful that God gave us a chapter with one man's sincere desire to have this word in and then be absorbed into his life. And he said, Thy word is very pure, therefore thy servant loveth it. Do you love the word of God this morning? In John 8, 31 through 32, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. As we understand the importance of the living word of God today, we need to run to it. We need to want it. We need to pick it up and we need to read it. Number one on your pages. Prepared to receive. Prepared to receive. This is how we can be rooted in the Word of God. James chapter 1 verse number 19. Wherefore my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, swift to hear, prepared to receive the Word of God. As we look at letter A in our lesson, it is we need a spirit of receptivity. We need to be prepared to receive. We need a spirit that wants to receive the Word of God. Now, I've used the illustration many times. I'm sure you've heard it about how when a quarterback goes to throw that football, now we're entering into football season, aren't we? And for those of you who love football, you understand what I'm about to say. That quarterback's opportunity, his ability, even if he is the best quarterback in the world, it is not down if there's no receiver out there or one who is prepared to receive when the defense is as good as they are. Listen, my friends, we need to be ready on the offensive at all times to receive the word that God has for us. Growing up, my favorite team was uh, San Francisco. Francisco 49ers. That's who I loved. And that was back in the day 
days of Steve Young and Jerry Rice. I was reading about Jerry Rice and studying him. And when he was growing up and he was playing football in college, there's a couple things he liked to do. One thing is when he was with his dad working, he would work with bricks. His daddy was a bricklayer. And so he got those tough, rugged hands by working with bricks all the time. And so he could catch the hot balls that were thrown at him. He also was a man that ran on the beach all the time to increase his stamina and endurance as a wide receiver for the San Francisco 49ers. And then I love to watch that guy catch a ball when Steve Young would throw at him. Whether it was a one-handed grab as he was diving or whether it was just some uh, just a j- ability that he had to be able to jump over the defense and catch it. I love watching that guy catch it. But he was prepared to receive it. He exercised himself in such a way to receive it. He wasn't going to let the defense block the word or the ball that was being thrown at him. And we make the application today. How prepared are we? How willing to be receptive are we when the Word of God is thrown at us? I counseled several people, one of the recent ones I've been counseling. Man, this young man has just gotten excited about the things of God. He texted me one day, he said, Pastor, what's this about giving? I, I want to understand what it means to give. And is giving a love offering at church the same as giving to your pastor? He wanted to be a blessing to me. And as I began to discuss with this young man the opportunities that we have as believers to give back to God, it was just so exciting to see the light come on in his eyes. And is understanding to willingly receive what the Word of God has to say about giving. And we'd look and we'd understand in the Old Testament, in the book of Malachi, that the reason why we have robbed God is because we are not faithful in our tithes and in our offerings. But when we get, get faithful, as I was telling this young man, God says, you'll see that I'll open up the windows of heaven. I will pour you out a blessing. And then he says, I will rebuke the devourer. In those days in Malachi, the devourer was that which kept their crops from producing fruit. And God says, if you give unto my storehouse, I will allow your crops to be fruitful. And I don't know what areas of your life you need to be fruitful, but if there's a lack of fruit in them, let's check our giving. Let's see how it is. Are we robbing God? You say, preacher, that is Old Testament. Oh no, my friend, that's just where God begins in the Old Testament. He even increases in the New Testament. And people who like to tell you the tithe was Old Testament, which that's where you find it. You'll find in the New Testament that people who gave, gave well over a 10% tithe as we see in the Old uh, Old Testament. They were willing and ready to give of themselves. They gave beyond themselves. They gave until it hurt. In many cases, they gave of everything that they had and they were blessed the better for it. So as we look into the Word of God, we deal with having that receptivity. How are you going to react when you hear that God says to give of the first fruits of thine increase? Upon the first day of thy week, you bring in that which you give to God. As you read in the Bible these things, they can be hard if you didn't grow up on them. I grew up on it. It was just natural for me. When I got a job that said, this is what you do with your paycheck when it comes in, you give that to God first. So I've had no problem doing that in my life. But somebody who has never done that before. They say, oh man, that's a pretty tough thing. I'm not going to be able to make it. But we need to be willing to receive God's Word. And that's just one example. There's all kinds of things in the Bible that can be hard to hear if we're trying to walk in the flesh and then try to balance our life by learning how to walk in the Spirit. The Bible says you can't walk in both. Learn to walk in the Spirit of God and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The lust of the flesh does not want to do what the Spirit of God wants to do. And that's why you're going to say, well, I don't think I should give like that. I don't think I can give like that. I don't think I can tell somebody about God like that. I don't think that I can read my Bible like that. And if you live in the lust of the flesh, you will not fulfill the Spirit of God's desire in your life. And it all begins with being prepared to receive. We need a spirit of receptivity. A naturalist and his friend were walking through a park in a large city. The naturalist, of course, of course, had studied many aspects of nature. The insect world, the animal world, the plant world, etc. He suddenly stopped and said to his friend, Did you hear that? Did you hear that cricket? His friend questioned with all the noise of the cars and the people, everything else going by, how did you hear that cricket? 
Well, you hear what you train yourself to hear, the naturalist replied. To illustrate his point, he pulled out a few coins from out of his pocket and threw them onto the sidewalk. Immediately, a dozen people stopped in their tracks and turned and looked at the two friends. The ears of the people were trained to hear the sound of money falling on the sidewalk. They wanted to see if anyone would go to pick it up. You hear what you train your ears to hear. And when you train your ears to hear the Word of God, He is able to work in you and strengthen your roots. We sing that song. God's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. It took Him just a week to make the moon and the stars, the sun and the earth and Jupiter and Mars. How loving and how patient He must be for He's still working on me. But we look at some people and say, Lord, they sure are a work in progress. It's sure taking them a long time, isn't it? You know, sometimes we're at fault for why it's taking God such a long time. Mm -hmm. Because we have not trained our ear to listen to the Word of God, to be sensitive to the Bible. The book of Proverbs chapter 17 verse number 28 says, Even a fool, when he holdeth his peace, is counted wise. And he that shutteth his lips is esteemed as a man of understanding. One unknown author said, God gave us two ears, but only one mouth. Some people say that's because he, God, wanted us to spend twice as much time listening Listening as he does want us to talk. Others claim it's because God knew that listening was twice as hard as talking. So we hear what we train ourselves to hear, what we want to hear. In James 3, chapter, or chapter 3, verse number 1, My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. As we look at the Word of God, we understand that there's many different things, many different voices that we can hear. But are we going to allow the voice of God's Word to be the most important thing to impact our life? And in Galatians chapter 4, verse 6, sometimes we as preachers feel like this, as Paul felt. Am I therefore become your enemy? Because I tell you the truth. Letter B in her pages, we need a spirit of humility. It is a second quality that prepares our heart to receive the Word of God. That first is a willingness to receive, a receptivity. But now we are dealing with humility. I need this book. I love hard preaching as a pastor. It's what I love. And it's not just because I'm a pastor. It's because I'm a sinner naturally. I love it when the Word of God convicts me, but I love it when the Word of God comforts me. Give me the preaching of the book. It doesn't matter how long or short it is. It doesn't matter how loud or how soft it is. It doesn't matter who is preaching it as long as it's the Bible. I like the preaching of God's Word. And the more Bible it is, the more I like because it's the Word of God that changes me. And it's the Word of God that challenges me. And it's the Word of God that st causes me to realize my way is not His way. His thoughts are not my thoughts. And I get in this book and realize more and more that humility is what I need. What did John the Baptist say? John the Baptist said that he must increase and I must. We need an attitude of humility before Him. Let's move on for just a second to point number two. We've got to keep moving. Planning to obey. Planning to obey. Planning to obey. Verse number 22 of James 1 says, Be ye doers of the word. That means we're planning already. Okay, We want to receive. Okay, We're going to church. Pastor's going to throw the ball as a quarterback to me. And I'm going to stick my hands out to receive the word of God. I wonder how my ratio to catches to drops am I going to have when pastor preaches the word of God. So I need to realize that I have a receptivity that's either good or bad. And then I need to plan to, when I receive it, I need to obey it. Verse 22. 22 again, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Letter A, hear the word. In 2 Timothy 4, 3 through 4, just listen carefully. For the time will come when they shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And that's why I can have people come into this church, and we've had many visitors, and they step before us. James and I were talking about this a little while ago. And they'll come before me and they'll say, man, I have never heard so much Bible in one message before. But when I go visit them, all that, that, and we just don't feel like that's our church because we've been over here and the music just rocks over here. And they'll choose the music that rocks over the preaching that reaches. 
There's a problem with that. The Word of God needs to have the place of preeminence in our service because the Word of God, the Word of life, the Word of God, it's interchangeable. And we lift up the Word. And we preach Christ through the Word. But the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. There was a man that came into my house to install my uh, the Internet that I use to upload and download and put all these sermons online. And he was sitting there saying, oh, yeah, I go to church, and, but we don't, we don't have any of that doctrine stuff there. And what he falls into? This category. Doctrine's become a scary world to the liberal church age. You know what the word doctrine is? Teaching. A wise man, the book of Proverbs says, will hear and will increase in learning. You want to be a wise man? Listen and increase. And specifically, as we're dealing with today, listen to what the Word of God says. Doesn't matter your age, you know that? If you read Psalm 119, you'll find two different categories that David speaks of. He says that I have more understanding in my youth than all the ancients because my, thy word is my precepts. I have more understanding than all my teachers because thy word. And that's why Paul said to young Timothy, Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word and conversation and charity and spirit and faith and purity till I come give attendance to reading. Here it is. To exhortation and to doctrine. Doctrine is important. I dare say if God put it in there, it's important. Amen. Charles Haddon Spurgeon will challenge you with this. He was a great Baptist preacher. He's probably one of the preachers as, as a Baptist that has written the most. Charles Haddon Spurgeon. He was used greatly to preach to thousands of people to the extent that I read in one of the books that Crown put out that when he preached on one particular Wednesday night, it exhausted him so, because he didn't have the technology that we have in these microphones, preaching to that many thousands of people that when he went to bed Wednesday night, I forget if it was Thursday night or Friday morning until he woke up. Because his body was so exhausted from preaching one message to that many people. Charles Haddon Spurgeon, the prince of preachers as they call him, had a godly lineage. In writing about his family's Puritan heritage and how he was brought up, Spurgeon said they were accustomed to bringing up babies on the body of truth so that a child of 12 in a Puritan home could talk with intellectual skill on central New Testament doctrines. Spurgeon wrote, schoolmasters are well enough, but godly fathers are by far the order of nature and grace, the best instructors of their sons, nor can they delegate the sacred duty that God has given them to someone else. When fathers are tongue-tied religiously, need they wonder if their children's hearts remain sin-tied? At age six, Spurgeon read Pilgrim's Progress. He was rooted in the Word of God at a very young age. It was no accident that Charles Spurgeon was greatly used of God to preach every Sunday to 5,000 people and to shake two continents, Europe and North America, with the Word of God. From an early age, his mother and father trained him in the Word. Spurgeon wrote, I bear witness that children can understand the Scriptures, for I am sure that when but a child, I could have discussed many a knotty point of controversial theology. But as soon as as a child is capable of being lost, he is capable of being saved. Amen. In the Spurgeon home, it was a custom of the Bible to read verse by verse every evening. And we can do the same every day with our families if we want to. We can lead them to hear the Word of God. This is all dealing with planning, planning to obey. Hear the Word, let her be, obey the Word. Obey the Word. Point number three, persistent in study. Persistent in study. James 1 verse 23. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful ear, but a doer of the word, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Earlier in these verses, and we've talked about them before, we've been for the book of James before, but we must be reminded that the Bible says that if one listens to the word of God and is not a doer of the word of God, he is like one who beholds himself, his face, in a mirror. And then he leaves that mirror and he goes away and he forgetteth what manner of man he was. Now, that doesn't make sense, does it? You and I can look in that mirror and we remember what we look like. Am I correct? 
You know? I mean, what do I look like? I, I, I bet that I got long hair about down to right here, don't I? My nose just sticks out about this far. Kind of crooked, isn't it? And I got brown eyes, don't I? And I'm about 300 pounds, right? I got a few chins to me. That's like someone who hears the Word of God, but never has a plan to obey it. And we forget who we are in Christ because we have not been continuing in the Word. To study the Word of God. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We're supposed to get in the book. We're supposed to study. We need to be persistent in it. I remember there was a man that he was driving down toward, on Knoxville towards 6. He was going south on Knoxville. And when he did, he got in a bad accident. He was a lost man. Bad accidents. His leg was severed off. The blood was skirting out of it. There was a policeman, thankfully, that saw the accident happen rushed to the scene, spun the car over, and literally reached his hand out the door and put his hand over that, uh, that, that uh, vein or artery, whichever one it was, that was squirting blood out, and tying the safe. And the doctor said if he would have gone another 60 seconds with that kind of blood loss, he would have been dead. I got in contact with this man a little while later. He created what was called the third airborne. For the Bible says, and he referred to the rapture of Jesus Christ, referring to the saints of God in that third airborne terminology. Uh, With all that aside, I had him come up and preach to our teenagers. And before I had him come up and preach to our teenagers, and gave his testimony how the Lord gripped his heart for his need of salvation as a wicked man, when I called him on the phone about 10, 10, 15 at night, I said, hey brother, what you doing? Oh, I'm just studying the word of God. That's kind of unusual. I said, what you study? Oh man, I'm just studying these disciples and how you know, they were taught by Jesus Christ to be fishers of men. And I want to be a fisher of men like that. I wonder where God would have caught me at 10, 10, 15 at night. I caught that man in the Word, persistent in study. Can I ask you a question? Will people ever catch you in the Word? I know that you can't study 24-7. And God didn't intend you to study 24-7. But God does intend for you to study. Not just to read. To study. Persistent in study. A, remember the Word. Remember it. When you study it, the more you study it, the more you remember. When I begin reading the Bible, I'm talking about reading the Bible through. I was challenged by David Gibbs III and his faithfulness to read the Bible through every month, even when he was in law school. And law school students have a lot of extra reading on the side that they do. And he would read the Bible through every month. You know what his daddy said about him? He would go to his dad and say, Dad, it just seems like the more I think about Scripture, as the more I read it, the more I talk it, the more I read it. And the more that I'm in the book, it just seems to become more of my life. And that's how it begins to be the more that you're in the book. You need to get in the book. David said, How sweet are thy words unto my taste. He is sweeter than honey into my mouth. Open thou mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. The purpose of this book is that we may walk in it and we may learn how to follow God through it. Joshua 1.8 This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, then thou shalt have good success. And about this time you realize, I've been climbing the wrong ladder of success. I need to get down and I need to start climbing the right one in the Word of God. Let her be, continue in the Word. Remember the Word, continue in the Word. We have all heard of saints who have loved their Bible, perhaps... Their Bible was preached from at their funeral because it was the focus of their lives. Their Bibles have been marked up and they are afraid from much use. Verses are underlined. Pages are dog-eared. These are the kinds of people who study and continue in the Word of God. They know doctrine, but more importantly, they know God. Amen. Their lives are deeply rooted in Christ and their rootedness is found in His Word. I'll say one more thing. Get in the book. Let's pray.